It's been a year and a half since I became mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, and it's the first time I've stood before all of you with the chief of police and our prosecutor to talk about an issue that is top of mind for many people in the city and county of Honolulu, and I believe in the state of Hawaii. As you know, um, natural beauty in our state is a top priority. In fact, it's enshrined in our state constitution in an amendment talking about how important natural beauty is for all of us in the state, residents, and of course our visitor industry, which is our major economic engine. And recently we've seen a company coming from the mainland disregarding the ordinances, laws of the state of Hawaii, and decisions already issued by our federal district court about aerial advertising. And we've, many of us in Hawaii have seen this before, people coming from the mainland, disregarding the laws, disregarding the views of the people, um, telling us what is right and what is wrong, and telling us what we should think and believe. And we're standing here together as a team, the chief of police and the prosecutor and the mayor to say that we're not gonna accept this, that we're not gonna allow a company coming from the mainland say we're gonna do what we want, we're gonna interpret the law how we want, and we're gonna blight the natural beauty of our island, and they say they will also do this on neighbor islands too. We believe the law stands, stands firmly behind us. So what have we done um, in the past couple weeks? I wrote a letter to the FAA asking them to clarify their, their, their points they made about preemption. And the FAA, to their credit, clarified it and said that their handbook, their rules, do not preempt any city and county ordinance. Two, I've asked them to revoke the permit that was issued. We have not heard back from them on that. We've asked the public through all of you to call 911 if they see aerial advertising. And the good news is the public has called and the chief of police through his department has cited the pilot. And there's gonna be a hearing coming up in early August. Three, we've asked the prosecutor and the prosecutor on his own stepped up and he's gonna be talking about what he's done. And finally yesterday I wrote letters to our congressional delegation asking them to help too since they represent, uh, they're part of the federal government, we asked them to go to the FAA and see what they can do to get the permit revoked or to stop this company who's violating, again, the Constitution and, and the ordinances of the city and county of Honolulu. So I'd like to turn it over to the chief of police, but before I do, I wanna ask, again, the public, should they fly this weekend? And Aero Banners is saying they are going to fly this weekend, despite all the different warnings they've received. If they do, please call 911 because we need to know where they're flying. We need a police officer to see what they're doing and that officer will then cite them and deliver the citation to the pilot. So Chief, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Honolulu Police Department's position, and it's always been our position, that uh, we're gonna continue to enforce all state and county laws. Uh, we've been working closely with the uh, prosecutor's office on this issue and with uh, other violations, uh, we will continue uh, to respond when called and take appropriate action. Uh, if we get a call, uh, we will attempt to locate and cite the pilot. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Keith? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. On July 3rd, we, well, we previously received a letter from the attorney saying what he intended to do on the aerial banners that he would fly. And he also indicated that he did fly aerial banners on Memorial Day. On July 3rd, anticipating on July 4th, he would fly the banners. We sent him an email and a letter to indicate that we disagree with his interpretation of the law and the case law. And we intend to enforce local ordinance and, and local laws. Uh, we did give him a notice. And then on July 4th, when the, they flew, we, uh, working with the police, had the pilot uh, issued a citation for violation of the local ordinance. We have subsequently filed a penal summons against the company. So on August 5th, there'll be a hearing with the pilot and the uh, company representative on the, uh, the criminal violation, uh, violating the local ordinance. And I must condemn, uh, commend the mayor for being coming up front and being very proactive on this issue. Thank you. Um, again, I wanna thank the great teamwork we have. I mean, we do work together a lot. Um, you may not see it. We rank as one of the safest big cities in the United States of America, and the credit goes to these two guys. He catches them, 
he prosecutes them. You need both to happen. And because of that, we rank at the very top. And because of that, I think visitors continue to come here because it's safe. It doesn't look like the rest of America. And two, the residents are safe. And this is another example of protecting our rights, standing up for who we are as a people. Um, I did want to, um, you, in your packet, you'll, ha you'll have, here's the, uh, the complaint for the penal summons here. It's an official document. It's a, it's a criminal complaint, right, Keith? Yes, it is. Not messing around here. And the prosecutor is sending a clear message to this. And of course, you also have the citation uh, by the police department. And more will be issued should they fly this weekend. So with that, we'll open it up to any questions you may have. And we, again, thank you for being here this morning. Mayor, there been one citation? One citation? One citation. You want to? Yes. Okay. We would issue multiple citations if we can get to the pilot when he lands. So part of it is you may see him on the windward side, North Shore, Waikiki. And then, of course, a plane flies a lot quicker than a car can get there. And so some, it, you need the timing to arrive at the airport and cite the pilot as he's getting out of the plane. Correct? You want to add to that? Hang on. $500 Let's... fine and three months? Oh, yeah, $500 and up to three months in jail. What is the company phase for that summons that you Fine. Say? No, fine. The uh, July 4th is the first time that we uh, issued the citation. Um, that was the first complaint we got. And then the second time is on July 6th where we received the complaint, but we tried to track the plane. And by the time we got uh, to where the plane had landed, the pilot had left. So those are some of the challenges. When we get the call, we'll track the plane and uh, see where it lands. And if we can uh, do it in a uh, timely manner and locate the pilot, then we'll cite the pilot. There'll be a, a, you know, a big audience usually when, when they fly. Uh, so you want that many people calling 911? I mean, is the system geared to handle all that? Um, you know, the system is geared to uh, handle all the calls that, that uh, uh, for example, uh, we received last year uh, close to a million calls. Um, so uh, if you see the plane, and I encourage the uh, public, if you see the plane and you see the banner, uh, give us a call and let, let us know where it's located because then we can track it that way because maybe an officer might see it, you know, in, in town and then it might come from, you know, Kalailoa or may land at the uh, uh, Honolulu uh, International Airport. So um, we can handle the calls. What, uh, what permit are you asking for to be revoked specifically? I mean, is it like the business license or pilot's license or which, which permit did you ask to be revoked? Donna, you want to answer that? Because Donna, it comes down over here. This is Donna Leon, our Corporation Council. Aloha. Uh, the mayor has asked the FAA to revoke the certificate of waiver that is issued by the FAA to allow the air, airplane uh, banner towing operations. So I guess if it's already on the books um, as being illegal, why did they get the permit in the first place? We're not certain. We've asked for a copy of the certificate of waiver, and we need to see it. If the FAA, though, is saying that local and state law supersede what they've given out, it doesn't even matter if they revoke. Um, the FAA regulations actually just uh, refer to local laws and say that the pilot and the company is responsible for obeying those laws. That's all that it says. So the company uh, has gone out and said that in this waiver that there is still a clause that that they're going by that, that allows them to fly. That's been their argument all along, even though the FAA has made that clarification. So it seems like the citations isn't stopping them from flying as, as well as the clarification from FAA. Where, where does this come to a head? Yeah, so we disagree with uh, Aerial Banner's attorney's interpretation of the FAA regulations. We have seen the changes that were made to the regulations since the bioethical case in 2006 which um, basically upheld the very ordinance that the prosecutor and the police chief are seeking to enforce. So we disagree that the FAA regulations actually supersede the local ordinances, and we think that um, the ordinances should be upheld and were upheld in the bioethical case. What were they flying July 4th and again July 6th, or at least a report of what you, they were flying July 6th? The banners. Yeah. What did they say? Or yeah. Is Deputy Chief McCauley? Yes, they, they uh, had the same banner both days. But um, on the second day, the officers in the district were busy at that time, and when they did go to cite the uh, pilot, he had already landed the plane in and left the area. So 
as soon as we get the calls, I'm sure the officers will see the plane and they'll respond to Kailo, Kalailoa and lo locate the, uh, the pilot and cite him. So we're just waiting for the court date on August 5th to resolve uh, this citation. Now, what are you led to believe they're going to fly on this weekend? Um, I heard they were going to fly one that said, will you marry me? And one that said, happy birthday. Supposedly paid for by somebody, but we're, we're not certain. This is just what we heard. Now, they, they normally land in Kalaimala. Correct. At the end, so is it possible to just wait for the pilot there, or, or is he actually landing at different areas sometimes at the end of, of the towing? Well, what we think he's doing is taking off from Kalailoa and then um, scooping down to pick up the banner in a field somewhere, not sure where, like a pineapple field or something, and then flying the banner around wherever, and then coming back and dropping the banner. So there's somebody on the ground that's taking the banner, and then he'll go and land at Kalailoa. So yeah, we don't want our officers sitting there all day to wait for the pilot. So when we get the call, we'll, we'll look to see where he's at and then follow up with the units out in that area. If you catch him in Kalailoa and he doesn't have the banner, does that mean because he doesn't have the banner, he's sort of getting away? No, we have photos of the plane. We have a description of the plane. We have the identification on the tail wing, wing of the plane. So we know it's the plane. It's a big, it's, it's a little yellow plane, in fact. It's very distinguishable. But your officer has to see the pilot in the plane? Not that officer. The officer uh, who initially sees the violation. We will have officers all over the island, and when, when the, we get the calls for complaint, the officers will look out and be the, be the witness for the officer who cites. What would be your message also to the customers or companies that are thinking about either advertising or, or using uh, this, this company, the service? Um, we don't get involved in that, but I think the outdoor circle, you can talk to them about what they think. Mayor, what about you? I mean, what, would, you, would you maybe even suggest, some have said boycotting the company, I mean, or boycotting, if a company uses it, maybe boycott that company. I mean, some have gone that far to say, what do you think? You know, I, I, all of you have done a great job covering this story. And I think the overwhelming reaction is one of anger and frustration by the people of the city and county of Honolulu. They don't like the fact that you have someone coming from outside trying to tell us how we should live and how we should be and how we should follow <coughs> laws or interpret them to their satisfaction. And I would think as a result, most people are, would be uncomfortable using such a company that it, when they, it, particularly if they pay to use it, you know, it's associated with a negative thing, not a positive thing. And so I'm hoping the marketplace will respond uh, accordingly. I think it's the exact wrong thing to do for a new company coming into our, our community, not to do it in a way that's respectful and humble and asking, can we come in, we want to follow the laws, it's more, I don't care. And I don't think the business on this island, or even in this state, embrace that kind of attitude. We're a very small community, we all try to work together, get along, and this company has totally disregarded that. And it's required police officers who should be out there catching the bad guys have to go cite a company multiple times because they say we don't care. And we're telling them we care. You have the chief of police and the prosecutor, two very busy people coming here this morning to say they care too. And we'd prefer that you not fly so they can get on with the other work that they have. But if they do, they're gonna be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And I cannot believe that private sector companies say I wanna be associated with that. But we'll have to see. Would, would, would they be at fault or could they be cited as well? I mean, if you're supporting what, at least in your interpretation, is an illegal operation, I mean, could the customers be I, you know, I don't want to interpret the law, but my answer is I don't think that the, the, the user of, of the, of the, no. of the company would be cited. But Keith, you may, you're going to know no, this. No, the, the, the offense is aerial advertising. That's the offense. The offense is not going and soliciting or paying for aerial advertising. It's the conduct of flying the aerial banners. That's, that's, uh, that's what's prohibited by the ordinance. And uh, let me add this. Uh, the law enforcement is one response, what the police and what the prosecutors do. We, we're pretty much reactive. We have to react to a crime that's been committed and our response, our law enforcement response is a reactive response. And the mayor being as proactive as he has been in this issue, in this case, uh, we have had discussions, the mayor and I, and uh, another response is a possible civil injunction uh, against the company to prohibit them from fine with, with a civil injunction. So uh, I think the mayor with his corp council uh, uh, will be considering that, and he can speak about that. But I, I must add that his corporation council and the attorneys in that department are very good. 
we've seen them in action. They've been involved in our gambling cases. They're very aggressive. They're very good litigators, and uh, they, they're, they're a good representation of the city in, in federal and state courts. Mayor, you didn't talk, discuss a lot about the hearings. The hearing on top of the court date, the court date is for the pilot. The pilot is going to court about the citation. No, so court no. date is for the pilot and the company, because we issued a penal summons against the company. So for the pilot and the company. Are you also yeah. able to? Just, just so I can make that really clear why I held it up. So what we have in your packet is one, a typed out penal summons done by the prosecutor. This is against the company. The police department has issued a citation against the pilot. So the company and the pilot will be there or should be there on August 5th. And of course, the prosecutor's office will be there in full force to move forward on both the penal summons and the citation. And the, the civil injunction will force them to, to not block. Is that what, that's what you're considering? As the prosecutor mentioned, we are looking at other ways we can be more proactive. Uh, you know, we've done the letters. We've gone to the congressional delegation. We're working together with our chief of police and, our, and, and the prosecutor. And we'll look also at uh, seeking perhaps an injunction. I don't know, Donna, if you want to add anything to that. But I, again, I like looking at all opportunities and ways to be proactive here. Instead of sitting back and waiting, particularly with a company who says we don't care, Perhaps that's an actual take, and we'll look at that too. How, how, will it actually, how will it actually stop them from flying? If we we're going to talk that. about that. Well, if uh, mayor decides to file an injunction against the, um, aerial banners, um, if the court were to issue either a temporary restraining order or uh, an injunction itself, it would require the company to stop flying, at least during the pendency um, of the case, until the trial on the merits has occurred. And if they still fly with that injunction? Uh, that would be a violation of the court's order. Are you able to go after the pilot's license? I just said, well, I'm letting a court's order. Keith, is that a good or bad yes, thing? It is. It's a bad thing. <laughs> really bad thing, because now the judge is upset. You, you can and, uh, snub your nose at the city and the mayor and the prosecutor, but you can't snub your nose at the, at the courts. And what kind of penalty would that mean? It's up for the judge to decide. Now, the, the state is, the DOT has issued them parking permit to park the plane. Are you asking the state to revoke that as well? Uh, we're, we're aware of the parking permit that's been issued um, to Aerial Banners, Inc., to park the plane at Kalailoa. <clears throat> um, we have been in touch with HDOT and we continue to work with them. Now, why did the state issue the permit if it's illegal to have them go to banners? Yeah, be, uh, it's purely for the parking of the plane. It has nothing to do with the enforcement of our ordinance. Are you able to revoke the pilot's license as well? I mean, just the actual ability to fly? Um, I'm, not, I'm not able to answer that question. Yeah. That's beyond the ordinance enforcement. As far as you know, the, the uh, deputy chief referred to the pilot possibly picking up the banner in a, in a pineapple field or whatnot. Is there any restrictions on that of, of pilot's ability to do that? There are, I'm aware of, FAA safety regulations that pertain to um, how the plane is supposed to be flown in connection with aerial banner towing. Um, in 2000 and, uh, excuse me, 2008, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals revoked aerial banner certificate of waiver for five, uh, excuse me, nine violations, including hard landings, which occurred in connection uh, with or, and without a banner in tow. So it's the FAA regulations that deal with the manner in which the uh, banner is picked up and you know, the, the manner in which the airplane is flown. As far as you know, are they doing it currently in compliance with FAA regulations? I don't know that. Well, so what is the exact, I mean, the Keith or Donna, I mean, the exact interpretation of the law? I mean, is it just flying the banner itself is illegal? Or I mean, what, is, what is exactly the <coughs> What is illegal is aerial advertising. And the courts, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals on two cases have said that it is not a freedom of speech. It is not a violation of equal protection. Uh, the airspace is a non-public forum. And uh, local ordinances and local um, uh, government have uh, a, a right to prohibit that type of advertising. And they also sit in, in a f uh, federal court that the uh, federal government does not have preemptive. Um, uh, is not uh, they, they they don't have exclusive uh, control over the airspace. 
Mr. Mayor, you said this is the first time in your administration you, you stood with the chief and the prosecutor. What kind of uh, response have you gotten from the public that's fought this kind of response? Well, I mean, I think the public is very concerned, and I think they're as upset as we are in this room with the disregard of the law. They've asked us to, to be as proactive as possible. Uh, we do, I work closely with the chief individually, I work closely with the prosecutor individually. Of course, they work together on cases. But in this case, I recognize that we needed, you know, everyone coming to the law enforcement officer and the prosecutor to help do this. And we'll do our part too, I've done part of it. But it, like many things, it's not just one person doing it, it's everyone coming together. And this is an example of that. And I'm sure it'll happen in the future too, when necessary. I mean, have there been other issues that have galvanized the public like this one? Um, there are other issues from time to time, but I think this is one that call, re required coming together. I wanted to ask your viewers for their help in this area. We do know that they're picking up the banner somewhere. We've heard perhaps in a pineapple field. If your viewers see where this is occurring, I would appreciate when you call 911 to tell them where you see this occurring. Because if it's on a private landowner, um, I'll be more than happy as the mayor to pick up the phone and talk to that owner and ask them to please prohibit that from occurring. Perhaps the landowner doesn't even know it's occurring. Um, but if they do permit it, I'm going to say, please stop it, because okay. it's helping someone violate our ordinance, and we'd like them to stop. I believe, by the way, if I made that call, they probably would stop it, if it's, you know, private property. Can the private landowner be cited? A, no. I, I, I don't want to speak for the prosecutor, but I think we've heard loud and clear from him. What's prohibited yeah, is the aerial yeah. advertising. It's not a, so what's going on? Aiding the, and abetting or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lot of money. They, they no, break no, it. No. <laughs> Let's make it clear. We don't want to go after everybody. We don't want to prosecute. It. Let's just prosecute the bad guys. The guys who, who really wants to, uh, the people who really uh, want and intend to violate the law. And that's the people we're prosecuting. Well, so this is legal in a lot of other big let, let, let me give you one example to, to <coughs> clarify what I just said. In a gambling machine cases, we didn't prosecute all the people who were gambling on the machines. We went after the people who were responsible for bringing in machines and snubbing the face, and snubbing to us that these are, this, this is not gambling machines. Um, they can do, do this and yet they were paying up. That's the people we went after, not the people who gambled. So our intent is not to go after everybody. We go after the people who are causing the problems. Same thing with the aerial advertising. And can, uh, Mayor, I don't know who wants that, but I mean, it's, it, this is legal in a lot of other big cities, so I'm playing devil's advocate. I mean, what, what's the harm in area like Well, uh, it's, it may be legal in other cities, but in this city, it's not legal. And we have a local ordinance to say it is, that it's not prohibited. It's prohibited. It's not legal. We're not concerned about what other cities do. We're concerned about what happens in Hawaii. And as the mayor indicated, Hawaii has the beauty the beauty that other cities may not have, that we want to preserve. Yeah, I'd like to emphasize what the prosecutor said. Um, you know, we're the first state in the nation, in all 50 states that banned billboards. We don't have them here. And from that early start, this is back in the 1920s, um, we have been very vigorous in terms of protecting our natural beauty, as the prosecutor also said. I mean, if you look out these windows right now, I, you know, I, dare anyone to step forward and say we're not as beautiful as any other part of the world. We are an incredibly beautiful place. And people come here and we live here for that beauty. And we cherish it and so we have many laws and provisions to protect it, including this aerial advertising ban. And we're gonna stand up, we're gonna protect it and make sure that no one violates it and send a clear message to anyone who may be thinking about doing this in the future. You're gonna face the full extent, you're gonna have the chief of police and the prosecutor on your butt. That's what we're doing here. Can you talk about the, uh, uh, the resources this company is forcing you to use? You can have a lot of police officers out there looking for this uh, plane when it flies out, um, and you're going to have to go to court, and who knows how long the legal battle will be. Okay. Um, you know, we issued uh, one citation already, and like uh, the mayor had asked and that I've been asking for is that uh, whenever the uh, public, uh, the citizens see the plane flying around with a banner to notify us. Um, our position is that we investigate all violations of the law and um, you know we're not going to put together a task force because um, you know it, it doesn't rise to that level yet so it's not taxing our, our resources right now so Keith you want to answer from your side in turn. Uh, we have uh, deputies who go to district court every day so th this will be just another case that they'll be handling uh, it requires uh, 
legal research, probably additional legal memorandums um, to uh, uh, inform and educate the judges as to what the law is. So it's not unusual, uh, and we're not adding additional resources. Okay, any other questions? You know, I just want to thank again the Chief of Police and the Prosecutor for coming together today on, on this issue. Um, before we conclude, I, I do want to send out a, a message of condolence from all the people of the city and county of Honolulu to those who lost loved ones on that Malaysian airline that was shot down yesterday. I mean, coming this morning and listening to the news about the body of a young girl, just three years old, in a red T-shirt, lying in a wheat field, um, for me is an example of how disregard of international law and national sovereignty and a lot of hatred results in a tragedy like this. And I know here in the city and county of Honolulu, in the state of Hawaii, people, for the most part, come together and look for common ground. And there we don't have these kind of tragedies, but I know we're all very saddened by what occurred. And uh, we're just hoping it, it sends a message, please step back, take a deep breath, try to find a way to resolve issues like this. With that, I want to thank everyone. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Prosecutor. Thank, you. thank deputies and thanks, Donna. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.